In this video, we'll learn how an energy valve works, how it saves energy, where it is used, and how it can prevent the low delta T syndrome. Here's the energy valve. It has an ultrasonic flow meter that measures the flow, GPM, going through the piping. This gives us the GPM in our equation. Then we have temperature sensors on the supply and return piping to our heat exchanger or coil. This will give us the delta T in our equation. With these two values, the energy valve's onboard controls logic can determine the energy or the Q in our equation which is the BTUs per hour. This consumption of energy can be used to bill a tenant for their use of the chilled water or heating hot water system. To adjust the flow or GPM, the energy valve will modulate the actuator on the control valve. The GPM is adjusted to reach the delta T set point of the energy valve. We can look at the difference between maintaining delta T with an energy valve and the traditional system. We converted our formula to solve for GPM. Using a heat load of 120,000 BTUs per hour, or 10 tons, we get 15 GPM if the energy valve is maintaining the delta T at a set point of 16 degrees. The traditional system has slipped to a 6 degree delta T, requiring 40 GPM to get the required heat transfer. This additional GPM causes an increase in pump energy and would require larger piping. The size of the piping for the energy valve system would be one and a quarter inch, while a traditional system would require two inch to match the same heat transfer quantity. If the heat load drops to 36,000 BTUs per hour, which is 30% of the peak design load, then we get 4.5 GPM through the energy valve at a 16 degree delta T. The traditional system is requiring 12 GPM to get the required heat transfer. Saving energy requires managing the delta T through the heat exchanger so that the pumps and central plant equipment runs efficiently. The energy valve can be used with air handlers as shown here. The contractor installs the energy valve and a temperature sensor on the chilled water supply piping. Connection can be made to a building management system for remote monitoring, data collection, and programming. The energy valve can be installed on fan coil units also. The energy valve can be installed on chilled beams. The energy valve can be installed on just about any coil or heat exchanger. Tracking the delta T of the water being delivered to HVAC coils is important in maintaining an efficient system. The energy valve tracks the current delta T and compares it to the set point delta T to be maintained, making adjustments as required to keep it at minimum set point or above. To increase the delta T, the energy valve will throttle to lower the flow of water through the coil. This gives the water more time to transfer heat. There is a large cost in electricity consumed to run chillers to make chilled water. This makes it important to use the energy consumption power of this water to its maximum ability, which will occur with a higher delta T. Higher delta T systems also use less pump energy as more energy is removed in a smaller volume of water. A delta T of 16 is much better than a delta T of five or less. The energy valve manages delta T to maximize the energy use of the system. To avoid low flow situations, there is a minimum flow setting of 30% when using the delta T manager. If you have a low delta T, then the water is passing through the coil too quickly, not allowing enough time for heat transfer to occur. By managing the delta T, the energy valve can reduce the flow 
GPM, through the coil, allowing enough time for the water to consume heat from the heat exchanger. Building management system integration. The energy valve has the capability to connect using Modbus and BACnet protocols in addition to the capability to connect securely to the internet. This allows for monitoring of temperatures and flows which can be used to build tenants for energy consumption. The energy valve logs the energy consumption for up to 13 months on the valve or for indefinitely when connected to the cloud. The control range signal is set at the default of 2 to 10 VDC. If we look at the chilled water system serving a building, its purpose is to remove heat using as little energy as possible. This requires that the chilled water carry as much heat as possible within each volume of water passing through the coil. In order to do this, we need the water to increase in temperature as much as possible between the chilled water supply and chilled water return. This is indicated by the delta T, the difference in temperature between the supply and return. A higher delta T requires less to be pumped through the system saving on pump energy. In order to avoid providing too much flow to a coil or heat exchanger, an energy valve can ensure optimization of system flow. By measuring the temperature of the supply and return system water, whether chilled water or heating hot water, the onboard software can optimize flow. Using ultrasonic technology, the energy valve measures the flow through the valve. With the flow and temperature of the supply water circulating through the valve, calculating the total energy is a simple formula. Q equals 500 times GPM times delta T. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.